this one it could just be turned in Yeah, because that one you did turn the ground on the inside. Yeah. Fine. Wasn't drying, wasn't drying, wasn't drying. And my now that now that we have the wonderfully effective um <laughs> dehumidifier. Yes, we've been getting like a gallon of water a day. Yeah. Which is really amazing. Just for fun. So keep working. Yeah. So, we yeah. delayed. We're getting around to doing the uh, um the rounding of the pair of pipkins. We had a cold after. Yeah, we came home with a cold from Ursula's. Okay. We need to do shopping because we're out of food. Yeah. No. We just need to find three of the same <laughs> the size. Same way. Get out of Point C. <laughs> Here we go. Yay me. So the tool she's got on the wheel head at the moment is it's called a Giffen grip. Now there is a um, more low-tech version of centering the piece for trimming, which involves multiple pieces of clay and constant checking. And then there's this tool. I like this tool. Because I learned doing it the other way. Oh, ditto. No, just gonna do. Instead of rounding it by hand, I'm just going to trim it because it went from, oh my god, it's still shiny wet, to, well, it's a bit on the dry side. Oh, the noodles coming off of it looks like it's still fairly malleable. Oh, yeah. It's, it's fun for trimming. Yeah. Will you be doing any of the pressing out from the inside? You see, I think it might be too fun for that. Okay. Before it was too soft. Yeah. But this one is small enough in the base, anyways, I can just do this. Yeah. And the nice thing with the dip and grip, oop, because I'll have to put three feet on it. Notice this has this nice thirds configuration on it. So, it's actually really good. Oh, yes. Multiple things. And we bagged up the handles and feet the other day. Yeah. Actually, suppose what I could do is this and put the goop on top of there for you. Yeah. So would it actually be handy? Oh, do you want to make your stamp? Yeah. First, I'm going to check to see if I have it even. Pretty much. Here. Should I shoot over there's people's? Yes, I'm sorry. There we go. And I can see what you're doing with your hands. Actually, that'll be a good angle. Yeah. Now, Alex <laughs> Roberts, Paula Sneed, Rachel Swoomore, Bill Fortney, Jeffrey Bells, and Debra Hershey. And we'll yeah, make sure to I'm feeling to see if it's even around the bottom. And there's a little Check. bit of a ridge. Evening it out. Taking the ridge out. Yeah. And when the piece you is want it to be even, otherwise you're gonna get uneven heating. Uneven heating, you'll get cold spots, hot spots, more like to crack. You want it to be even. Even is good. Oh, also cook, cook better that way. way. Yeah, oh, it'll definitely cook better. Andrea Scott and here's how you do. Hello. And I'll do this old tag Eleanor after the video's over so she can see it. Mm -hmm. And thank her for the recommendation on the um, dehumidifier. Oh yes. It working it's working wonderful. Instead we of ninety percent, we have like sixty percent. Yes. We have purple pump this. So it looks good. Oh thank you. And interestingly enough, the uh, um, Facebook commentary is now coming through the uh, um, messaging macro bit in the thing. So it's actually coming up on screen, which is good for those who are watching it later or via other um, streaming methods. Yeah. Now it's all coming up on screen, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah.
Which thing, thing I was using? The thing with the thing. It's the tool I was using. Which tool? This will work. Okay. Because I think I'm the... I'm looking I for... I think the other loop Yeah, but I'm also looking for a specific shape. Okay. There are... Ooh, there's three loop tools over here. Yes, they blend in as your basic clay color. And I'm going to put all of the, the ribs mm -hmm. into one pile. No, because none of them are right. Go oh, right away. <laughs> Let's see. How many loop tools are this way? No, I don't have a loop tool, but I have one of those early style trimming tools. Yeah, which is actually a period tool. Oh, oh Lord. There, there we go. go. Which is kind of cool. It's just a shaped piece of iron. Yeah. Don't you love it when a blend comes together? Yes. Uh, I've been called uh, Armory and Mandela Warhammer at Chapel. So this would be a tool period to the time that you would be making such things. So if you look at it, it's a very simple tool. They may ah, oh, it would have been one that do you think you could have made a piece like that out of wood if you if you had one of the but like a these were mainly you saw them out of surviving ones. ones. Of yeah, they could have been, but they wouldn't yeah. have survived during one because they would yeah. break. Because it's like they would be bone. There would be bone. Yeah, you could bone. Carve, carve bone into that. But thing. these they would even sharpen because they have a beveled edge here. Yeah, so if you as as you grind it away and it gets duller. Because the clay will grind it away, or effectively running the metal across sandpaper. Yeah. Which is why I don't use a lot of metal tools. Because you got tired of them grinding away. Yeah, in about a year or two. Is it, do you find that the wood tools actually last longer than the metal tools? Well, it depends on what you use them for. Yeah. But a lot of them, I think they're, they're made with soft metal. Yeah. If you actually made them out of good steel, they probably last much better. Yeah. But with the ones that really last, I the silicon. Yeah. Be nice, real age kind of materials. As a more period uh, version of what she's using right now, it would have been either bone or oh, yeah, antler. Bone. A bone or antler, which were much more popular because and common. Because you have that one tool. I have a couple of those somewhere. Yes, I have a lot. Oh, I know, I know where the, the horn one is. It's down there. I was actually using it the other time. Ah, yes. And I need the feeties. The feets. The feet that are in there. Yeah, the horn one must be downstairs. Oh. Corn ones and bone ones and wood ones. Yes, over the years I've collected a lot of handfuls for the paper. There's one foot, one handle, two handle. Oh, here we go. I was taking out the handles so I could get to the feet. Yeah, because those two handles aren't matched. And the not, but I'm, I'm not even sure the feet are matched. The no, the feet are get down, take it down to the bottom, and and voila. The feet There's are five. There's one more. <laughs> the feet and are rough. Yes. Oh. Do you want me to, since while you're working on them, this one actually spray this one down a little bit? Yeah, spray that one down. You. Stop that. Uh, turning the wheel off? Yeah, because it was starting to creep. I wheels. just need three little footsies. Three little footsies. They Take the six feet and make two sets. Yeah. Thing is, is watching Time Team, very few of the cook pots actually had feet. I know. Very few of them even had handles. Yeah. Well, those are some of the earlier ones, too. True. Very true. We had the Roman and the Bronze Age ones, which didn't yeah. have handles. Yes, you can tell what kind of show we're watching right now. 
and I'm watching this show, and it's not goofing off, it's research. Well, it's like watching the one with the Spanish Armada ship that it got oh, down and all the Let's Italian the pottery. pottery. They're saying it's Italian. Spanish. It's, they really? got the pottery expert there. Go, it's Italian. It's Italian. It's, yes. Which one are you looking for now? Yeah. This ah. is just a cut. And you're cutting them at an angle? Yes, I'm cutting them at an angle. But the only space I have is like right in front of me. So yes. Now, like, me, you're so. just behind oh, yeah, the curvature. Good. Thank you. That's just... And I'm going to put one foot in front of each of the legs of the um, Giffen. Giffen. I'll put there so it doesn't fall. Yeah, that would be sad. This is going to just roll it along to get them more even. Because when they were initially made into that... They were really soft. It was really soft clay. They sat for days like firming up. Yeah, a week. Before we... Um, Usually a little over a week. A little over a week, yeah. So, yeah. But in the last two days, we've had... Con two? Three days? We've had controlled humidity? Yes. <laughs> I know. It's lovely. Ooh, it's like that one up there actually needs 59%. Ooh, it's down like dry in here. <laughs> this, yeah, that one reads consistently like 5% lower than the one next to Let's the see, I'm also rolling with just my fingertips, so I'm putting fewer um, hand ridges. Yes, the bone ridges. The, the fleshy bits of, yeah. of course, if yeah. I did with here, I guess my hands are flushy the chin. But you have a lot more muscle on your hands. But I don't go the whole length of my hand because you have knuckles. Whereas I generally all when I'm rolling up foil, I have to use the palms of my hands. Because if I use my fingers, I leave grooves. Because my fingers are a lot usually yeah, more the finger protruding knuckles. fingertips or the palms. Yeah. Don't use the bony part of the the middle part of the fingers. Exactly make, try to make sure that they're the same length. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Details. I was like, oh, I'll need to get you a bat so you can level the feet. And I'm like, wait a second. You're sitting at your wheel head. You're a bat me by. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to cut it at the slant. I measured it so I knew what the slant was going to be so they'd be the same. Yeah. Because having them in different slants is not bad. And oh, there's your last leg. Yes. It's the last leg to stand on. And I will put this in the front back. And this chair. Well, thank you. Thank you. Once we get the feet attached, we can lift it up and show how rounded the bottom is. Because the rounded shape also allows the flame from the arm it to go around, around the shape. Yeah. So you get heat on the sides as well as on the bottom. Yes, yeah, so there's a notification that the um, the video has been shared. Oh, cool. Here. Okay, scrappy yeah. bit. Scrap clay. Oh, you know the the little um, a little dehumidifier over here. Uh huh. We really should have checked in the other day. Oh, the yeah. water. Oh goodness. There was a he was puddle. still yeah, he's still plugged in. Yes. Oh so dear. I'm gonna go this. You said those containers are. <coughs> yeah, and I still had to pour some out. Be right back. I suppose I can leave that one off now that we have to we'll take that one and put it in the other one. Yeah. Because it helps. It helps communicate the moisture. But it just was not enough. Yeah, there's a significant puddle underneath the oh shelf. Dear. Oh, um, dear. And remember that it has to be emptied. It doesn't shut itself off. 
That's a good thing to know. Yep. Yeah, we'll extract this thing. And I'm just doing the scoring so yeah. it has rough grippy bits to attach. Okay. So I'm going to put the, the goo, which is the slip, it's the muck out of the water. And it's all gooey. That's why I call it goo. It's just Oh, that dude's kind of firm, isn't it? Oh, it gets that way. It's not like the red clay, which we use it up as fast as we can do so. Yeah. Which is kind of nice in a way. And then you very little in the way of waste. And here are the bits. To the bits. It's kind of cross-hatch kind of a thing. Make nice rough surfaces. Yeah. Not with it. The goo gets into the crevices, and then the crevices can it get all bonded. Bonded. And it makes for happy legs that stick. And go. What kind of clay would you recommend for beginning with small pinch pots for burning incense cones? I would try stoneware. Yeah, something with some grit to it. Yeah. Not too, too, too gritty, but you don't want something that's going to be <laughs> fall apart. Something with like that 60 ish grit. Yeah, you can get, there's a lot of them out there. Like a B mix, or there's. Probably want something that's Does mid fire B, mid fire stoneware. Because the stoneware with the brick in it is going to have more strength and it's going to be easier to shape and hold it shape more. Smooth clays tend to be floppier. Yeah. When you're working with them. And if you're just doing a pinch pot, you want something that's going to hold its shape. See, even with it gooey, this one holds its shape. Yeah, because that's just slightly thicker than peanut butter consistency. It's got a cookie dough right now. Yeah. The stuff out of there. Yeah. Every home ceramic shop is going to have a different variety of stoneware, too. So Big fire stoneware, not too gritty. Not too smooth, either. So yeah. It's kind of a, kind of a nuisance. Kind of like just with stoneware, you have the smooth, basic stone. Just want to want something to explore before making a big investment. Maybe yeah. maybe like a bag of the, the B-Mix equivalent. A B mix. There's a couple of different companies that make a B mix. Yeah. You could get the B mix with sand. Yeah. Because that way it has a little grit to hold it together, and it's not expensive. No. You buy it by the twenty-five pounds, and it's no more than ten dollars. Yeah. It's probably. I. We buy clay by, by the, the ton. ton. Literally ton. <laughs> in which case we get bulk discounts. Uh, so I'm trying to think of, and a How box of clay is two bags. So how much would a bag you don't, be? I remember it used to be box. the six to eight dollar range, but, but it may it could be the eight time. to ten dollar range per bag now. I don't know because I buy it by the pallet basically. Yeah. So at least we don't have issues with having to get rid of pallets now. No. They delivered it and stacked it up neatly for us in the different varieties. It was so nice. I like our delivery person. They were wonderful. So. With those ones, do you have to compress them like you yes. do with other handles? I have handles? to do that, but I'm getting some of the excess goo off first. Because what I want to do is you want the compression. See how the stuff is oozing out? That's because I'm pressing. Ooh, um, Pickens. Eleanor is in. Hey, Eleanor. And that's Sorry, it took us a few days. We came home from Ursulmus with a cold. Then yesterday we had to go shopping. <laughs> Because we had no food. Because but the um, dehum dehumidifier is working great. It's under 60% humidity in here. It's great. And well, things are drying. Yay. You, there. Now what I'm going to do. You've got a big lump of glop on that one. Yeah, because it's on the side I can't see. But also, as I turn it around, I'm going to stand it up. I couldn't... Um, do the whole molding it, but it was 
Okay, oh. Where's, oh there, there it is. is. And yes, what she has right there is a level. Oh, is the wheel head itself level? Generally, it's within. Okay. Yeah, because. I was just making yeah. sure. I it is. remember. I checked. So it's. So maybe. Uh, Sarah. Okay. <laughs> Katie Gallery. There we go. You have said you want to be right there. Really, you do. Because you want it to be level. And this is the time when you can adjust it. Yeah, you don't want to. Maybe you're going to have to. Oh, one of your legs is starting to slide off. Well, this happens, though. Mm -hmm. So now it's. Actually, it was tweaking. It was getting crooked, which is always annoying. Oh, yeah, they're twisting. And they were at the same length when I put them on. Aha! A level. My first tripod fry pan just came out of this, and it's a bit wonky. Yeah. Yes, it's. The level you go to the hardware store and you buy the cheapest level you can find. <laughs> I think I paid two dollars for this one because I knew I was going to be doing horrible, horrible things to it. If you notice, the only um, one of the bubbles that's actually visible anymore is the one in the middle. There are ones at either end for the forty-five and the um, the upright. Yeah, those those don't get used. And then there we go. I want to let that one dry. Oh, take him. Uh. Here, take your left. Yes. And now, uh, let's see. Can I actually force this one? She's forcing her knuckles into it from the inside. Yes. Or you could use, you know, a rib. You go like this, except it wasn't drying, and now it's a little too dry. Like, wait, and not really touch them at this point, Sarah. No, I'm not changing where they are. I'm, I'm but if the I found that that also can change it, kind of warp oh, them. I let know. It, let it firm up a little first before you go mucking. This one has a big gap. I was holding onto this so it didn't move. Yeah, but it always makes a move no matter how much you try not to. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Yeah, turn it back on because I want it to spin. It's not sitting in there straight. There we go. But I, I swear, the best thing is the giving grip. It is such a wonderful invention because it takes so much less time to center things when you want to trim them or attaching parts if you're doing a large. Um, Freak piece? Yeah. But the other nice thing about this is notice the feet are at one third intervals. You put three feet on the given. So, what you know, guess work. Because it got a little firmer than I wanted it to. I suppose if we didn't buy food yesterday, it would have been fine. <laughs> That's why we chose to go the Costco that we need. Yeah. We're making the wall go even so that the heat will go evenly around the piece. Yeah. Although the early 
ones are really straight. Yeah, they look like modern flip flops with handles, with feet. Yeah, they were just straight, large cylinders. This Time Team. Yeah, we've been watching Time Team on Amazon. So. There's lots of pottery on there, just saying. There are you. Stop that! I think we're on season nine now that we're watching, and yeah. that that one from that Spanish Armada ship they had everything from fine tableware to a couple of pipkins. But they were really, really thin, light oh, pipkins. But you know they're on a shipboard, so it is. What are these things with the three feet? I don't know it was just the broken bottom of it with the three. feet. The three yeah, feet. The, the surviving part were all. I was impressed that all three feet were still intact. Well, if you saw how thin the wall was, yeah. that's what broke. And it left the, 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 the heavier, it the, the, the heavier yeah. part. Now legs. what I'm doing is I'm checking the bottom to see if it's even, even. And have it nice and smooth on the inside too, because you want it to heat evenly. And getting your spoon caught in ribs in the bottom, it's hard to clean, it's awkward. Kind of scrapey sounding, which is nasty. Not that I made oatmeal every morning for about a year. In a pipkin. It was my test piece. That was until someone what? dropped it in the sink when they were washing it. And, and it, it cracked. cracked. Yeah. Didn't break, it cracked, but I didn't use it up in there. So, very good for making oatmeal on a gas stove. Yes. I don't know about doing it on a hot stove. I don't I probably need a privet or something to keep it. From well, you're contacting the elements. Yeah, right. that's what I've been told. Someone who'd actually tried it. Yeah. And they said it worked. And it's, oh, that's interesting. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably if you were designing one to, for that kind of use, you'd want one with a flat bottom. Well, yeah, because but this is the surface. But that one, since these, it breaks over, yes, it? these are going to have the. They're going to over flame. You want it with the rounded bottom. It's that's what shape it is. It's the round. Oh, kind of honey pot. It's kind of the honey pot shape. Yeah. And now we do this. Can we get any marks of inadvertently made off? And you're often like either grain or brown. Yeah. That nice period looking green. Easy copper glaze. Yeah. And you had the brown, which was iron. iron. So you had grain or brown. Not very exciting. No. Also, it's going to affect the way it cooks. Because, um, like you Some have of those Papa Middle Eastern recipes that call for a new, new green bowl. bowl. And it was kind of like one of our friends used to go, I don't know what, and I go, I know why they're saying that. It's sterile. It's sterile, and also, it's a copper. And that's why we asked her, um, the recipes that called for that were often egg dishes, egg or cream. And they were. Because, well, copper affects the way eggs and cream whip. Yeah, so. It's another thing for making sure if you're making one of these, make sure your your glaze is food safe because you're heating food in there, food or liquid, and it's going to interact with it a lot faster, faster, especially if you have any sort of acid compounds. In there. Yeah, that could be bad. Being, make sure you know what you know your glazes. Know your glazes, especially if it's going to be a cook pot. Little feces, little stubby nubbin things. And but now I have to smooth them out before I attach them. And picking feet really did very greatly in length. Yeah, anywhere from little nubbins to yeah. Well, well that's feet. impractical though, because they're yeah, gonna break. The long, because we've seen some people make the really long, graceful legs. Really narrow. Yeah, and that's kind of. You catch them on the, on your trivet or the edge of your. And what you do with them with one of the legs breaks, you have a metal trivet to set it on. Or convenient then, rock. Well, a lot of what they did is there's also people who've made the trivets. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was told. 
um, historically. It's one of the Cook's people. Yeah. So I believe them. I can't remember which one it is. They told me about that, but you know. And that's good. Well, that makes sense. And they had, you know, it's just the little. Boop, 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 boop. And so was that one time it was the had... four, four pieces, and they're forged at the ends, bent down. Yeah. Trivet. And it's kind of like, that's clever. It even showed me when I was. It was years ago at a West Frontier War. Well, they have Cook's play dates. They have Cook's play date. So you're going to give them long legs or short legs? No legs? You said no. Short legs. Long legs or short legs, not no legs. No legs? No. Nobody knows. That looks like I put it right over. Sorry. I'm just looking about size right okay. now. Notice there's only one of them on there. And then I take the next one. And I do this. Smooth them out. You don't need to smooth them out. No. But it just looks better. A lot of the... Um, there's some of them that were really smooth. There's others of them that had big finger grooves. Uh-huh. They were hot, just whooshed into the hot and mush. And then measure this, make sure it's the same length, same angle, that way they sit better. Come on, great tool, big, handy. Same thing with this edge on it. That'll work. You know, the tools that are your basic clay color. Mm -hmm. There are some people that, you know, carefully clean all their tools after every sitting. I have more no. things to do than that. What? I have more things to do. Yeah. Well, as soon as keeping you track of the tools is obviously <laughs> not a thing today. You know, where's that tool? I just had it. David and me. No. No. You. That one's actually longer than the other one. Uh, well then, that's not gonna. That's not helpful. That's not gonna turn out well. And since we've got that, the humidity, have some clay. You can start up oh, making dice. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Yay, Anytime. Guys. I'm glad I can help. And since we've gotten the humidity down in here, I'm tenting the tenting them so they can equalize with their legs. Yes. Because we don't want them to dry out too much before they're refined. Chrissy dry box. Oh no. But yeah, really it's best to let them sit overnight covered. It lets the um, joints um, solidify better. Yeah. They just put it down. Mind you, if your working condition humidity is over 80%, you may not have to cover them. Yeah, for days. For days and days. I put my elbow down in some dirty, some dirty clay water. That was fine. Well, no, the shirt's unlikely to stain. Because, of course, it's brown. Yes. Tell the creature. Hello. There we go. One third markings. If you want to make sure that you even get it. Moves. So you can get them aligned. Both that way and this way. What you can do here it is. Draw a line. Draw a line. Here we go. So you have the next marks the spot. Now they're in one third, and they're 
They're X and Y axis are aligned. The stars are in alignment. <laughs> They're not using any star stamps. And that is an X marks as well. And the uh, oh, the handles on these will go out on after the legs are burned up. Yeah, like tomorrow. Because don't want things. Yeah, you'd be you doing have, that, and that the, it'll buff that up. And, pieces. No, no, not good because it'll wobble. Yeah. You don't want it to wobble. That's why it's don't touch the legs right now. They need to firm up. Their their joint has to um, gel, as it were. Yeah. The moisture that's in the fresh goo in the joint has to migrate into the other pieces and all equalize. They have to become one. That's essentially what it is. So otherwise you have much higher chance of crackage, crackage the leg snapping off later during use. That happens anyways because eventually that's usually what breaks Yeah, on these things. Or the legs. Next one. No joints, but I no. Okay, more goo. This goo is getting less goo. Look at the other one. There's another bucket of this goo. Okay. Let me see about finding the other goo. Okay. There we go. That's some. I think the other goo is downstairs. Then never mind. I'll just use this goo. Because there's only one with that color up here. Mm -hmm. Let's get the third on the bottom. I'll compress them. With the last one, you stood it up on its feet. You, um, or did you sometimes you'll also use the fat with it sitting upside down. Is there, uh, um, a reason to do one over the other? You can do it either way. I can do that, do it this way for this one and okay. see. So people can see how it works. Also, it depends on how soft you want to. True, because if you have particularly soft legs, you want to do it the the inverted compression, or if you're or if you have a particularly large pipkin, yeah, like that one that we made that one time, the hill, what was it like a gallon and a half? Yeah, that was a big pipkin. That was big. What I can do with this is then it's the. There we go. 50 50 chance of it going boop into place or having to futz with it for a few minutes. Like the last one. Yeah. You didn't want to do what you're supposed to be doing. Fine. You can sit there and firm up some and do that. Because the legs were no. so short. Hello. No. So the legs on one of them was softer than on the other. Yeah. Yeah. I made all six of them at the same time. I know. Meh. But, you know, that's play for you. Yep. This one I can do with the legs, which have the... Oh, you're doing the grooved legs? I can do the grooved legs this time. I like this. What line? I yeah, didn't make a line. The guiding line. Oof. Yeah, there was no line. And people say, well, they didn't make those kinds of marks because there's no evidence of them in the finished pieces. It's like, um, 
just because you can't see them doesn't mean they weren't there it's at clay. some point. It's easy to change. When it's it's wet. one of the um, one of the good reasons to do experimental archaeology. Mm -hmm. Does it work the way you think it works? Because there's some of those um, archaeology texts that we've read where it's like, it was done like this, and we're like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Just no. It's also notice it's changing the angle of the feet, too. Yeah. Well, I can see we're doing that actually adds compression to the joint. I can watch the more of yeah. the boot squeeze out. Then you check to see if it's still level. Yep. If I reset the level. Yep, because it's shifted. Okay. Yeah. And that one's good? And yes, the sitting um, to firm up, they do so upside down on their rings. There we go. Yes, you want to make sure that you have nice firm connection points. Yes. Those connection points are as secure as possible. This is the first thing that's going to break. Are the Are feet? The legs. Well, they're just going to experience the most of the thermal um, yeah. shock. When you use a clay that has good thermal shock, which is generally a coarse clay. Coarse clays are more, more likely. But not always. Some clays, you just want to find out what that's kind another of. Thing that it's either that or you experiment with. Yeah. You play mad scientist. Here we go. Okay, so we'll take that away. There, you want to release the feet. Yeah. But yes, the gifting grip there, which is the, the center of the wheel there. Yeah, and then these come off. How much was the gift? Expensive. It's like two hundred dollars. Oh yeah, because they went up. I remember when he got the first one. Oh, there were a hundred and fifty. Yeah, it was still that was really expensive. Then. It was like four years. <laughs> and it's good. I don't care. That's the coolest thing ever, and it really does work. Cause and last, yeah, because you put some pretty heavy wear on the first one. Yeah, I use that one mostly just for. Um, you still food. use it. It's just not. It's not as precise as it once was. Yeah. I don't use it as much. I use it for um, doing the platters. Yeah. And you put the 15 pounds worth of plaster form on it. Yeah, eventually it's going to start showing wear. <laughs> so that yeah. one's still long part. This one has the little blue fingers. The other one has the little black fingers. And that's it. And probably tomorrow we'll be putting the big handles on. Yeah, them. and do do more throwing tomorrow. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye.